Hi and welcome to Simplifying Rural Marketing by Ajay. Today we have with us Mr. Dinesh D. Dasani to discuss on deep drive into rural brand wagon. Dinesh, VP Sales at JK Tires Limited has spent almost three decades handling key roles of sales, marketing, operations and strategy. He is expert in channel development and has handled key initiatives in various organizations to make it profitable. Friends, Rural marketing endeavor is to discuss with various rural leaders who have deep understanding of rural India. Please watch this video till end since Dinesh is going to be sharing a lot of strategies. He's going to be talking about various stories and there would be major key takeaways for the marketers who are planning to penetrate their business in rural India. So without wasting much time, let's welcome Dinesh to rural marketing. So hi, welcome Dinesh. Uh, so Deji, I have just one simple question which everybody has been asking is, what is the key difference between India and the Bharat? So thank you so much for inviting me to the rural marketing dot and, and thanks Ajay. Uh, thank India and uh, Bharat, uh, we can divide them into through various segments politically, socially, economically, and but mm. the key difference what we see is the the fast and quick development or the fast urbanization so as to call which is happening uh, towards bharat and uh, while indianization which is uh, which we can equate to urbanization and those traits are coming in into rural and very rapidly because internet is common for all. Uh, everybody is uh, having that access, and I think uh, there are huge traits when you even move into the rural. That how fast is it changing, and uh, and that's good sign for us. Uh, uh, people are becoming more aware uh, of about everything, and not only simple things which used to exist in silos earlier. So I think yeah, mm -hmm. that is a key difference, and which pave way for uh, growth huge and faster growth in the coming time so uh, how does uh, consumerism consumerism is there between the rural and the urban divide is it the same or they preserve uh, the, the the way they behave or they uh, and is there any major difference between these two yeah so uh, if you see the statistics uh, consumerism mm -hmm. the the growth of consumerism in rural has been spectacular in in the last decade or two decades i would say uh, companies like itc and all those big names what we see in fmcg forayed into uh, into rural with their footprint very making it very very strong and <clears throat> even growth rates if we see rural even in such conditions where i would say hostile conditions since when since deep monetization, when uh, the GDP is under pressure, growths are under pressure, uh, uh, there also rural uh, economy has been growing at 15% uh, versus urban economy, which is pegged at 5%. The major difference there, there, there which I see is rural uh, markets are not speculative while urban markets behave on some amount of speculation and and mm. therefore the real consumer consumerism the consumption markets uh, in rural areas have been growing rapidly and that is uh, one clear trait and those if you see all those major sectors like healthcare like transportation uh, horticulture and these and non-form segments are growing very fast. Even if you look at the GDP divide of uh, uh, rural, then it used to be an agriculture-based. Uh, I mean, it has always been said that rural is equal to agriculture in in uh, earlier times. I would say, but now it is not so. In the last decade, I think 170 million people have moved out of agriculture, and they're still into rural. But the services sector today is the largest in, cool. in the rural area, and that is the part of GDP. And that is a clear-cut indication. If you, even if you see our GDP divide, 
65 to 68 percent are is coming through services and largely mm -hmm. in urban areas uh, uh, services is a very strong segment and the mm -hmm. same thing is happening even in in rural areas so that is that is how the the growth of consumerism or is is been growing in rural mm -hmm. And uh, what is the generally their buying pattern? I mean, how is the cycle in terms of buying various goods and all? Yes, so the buying pattern is now becoming very similar, I would say, or mirroring uh, the urban buying patterns. And again, I'll come back to the same point of uh, the the one thing which has made a huge difference in the last two decades, I would say, fifteen years or twenty years. I mean, if I were to ask my kid or even younger kids that, you know, in our times when we were there, when we were in the school, there was no internet. And they look at us and say, what, Papa, what are you saying? Is that a joke? Now, these are the kind of things which we hear. But even you look at uh, people who come from, let's say, this so-called in the COVID-19 thing, we are kind of calling them migrant workers who are coming from you know, whether those rural part of India, they mm. have phones, they have Facebook's accounts, they have everything. So they are, they have access to the information. And I think access to information is one of the key uh, dividing, uh, key, what not the dividing, but key uh, factor, which is driving mm. this, this thought. And I think uh, uh, buying behavior, is also a lot of a lot of it is is characterized by uh, what they see uh, in in the internet what they observe and they want to become the same and hence that buying behavior and that's why you see most of the big brands their strategy is to get into rural india to have mm -hmm. their distribution footprint so have their their supply chains uh, extending up to up to rural India. Now we take examples of Hero Motors, Coop, or even uh, Maruti, for that matter. Maruti is 50% or 48% of their sales come through rural India. Uh, Hero mm -hmm. Coop's 52% of their sales come through rural India. So, so having so that means there's a consumption market, and the this what they and their products are not too different, which they offer between urban and uh, rural, almost similar. Mm -hmm barring the premium or the niche segment, what they call it. So, mm -hmm. so therefore, this buying behavior is, is becoming kind of similar apart from certain factors which you have to consider uh, going rural as a go-to-market strategy initially. But over a period of time, I think it's going to be a muddled water. But Dinesh, uh, this, let me understand this. So everybody I've been talking to, they've been talking about, let's say, Maruti or Hero Honda or Hyundai. There are few brands which will always keep on coming. But why not? There, there are so many brands which are available, which is only sticking their guns only towards the urban markets. They don't want to go rural and they don't want to penetrate rural. So what is that really which is stopping them? Are there any major hurdles which is not making them? And as our rural marketing, our uh, our this thing has been endeavor has been always to tell the markets that there's a deep mark, uh, opportunity which is available, but still people are not getting into that market. Uh, can you just uh, highlight on that, please? Yeah. So uh, there are different lenses which we need to uh, look through here. One perspective is that what is your uh, go-to-market strategy as a whole? Uh, so do you have, because uh, you need to first understand the complete supply chain uh, to go to rural. It is, so if we were to go with the, my, one, one is my mindset uh, that, okay, this is my mindset of dealing into urban. So the second is resources. The third is organization structure. So once and understanding the rural consumers' behavior, and and uh, uh, so all these things once you don't put in place, and you most of the companies what they do, they try to replicate the same structure, and yeah. believe that the Indian uh, the consumer is the same because he's an Indian, he is the same mm -hmm. what an urban customer is, and that's the biggest uh, you know flaw which flaw which makes their strategy as flawed. Uh, but interestingly, 
having worked in my previous organization and uh, we have studied uh, while I was given with the task of uh, even uh, implementing the rural strategy and that was the time when we actually went to rural market, actually traveled uh, to the villages, actually sat with the consumer and had chat with them. There was a mindset which we had that, okay, this is the way, uh, you know, the rural is. But, and all those verticals, all, all those information, what we have with the mindset we have got challenged. And there was a tweak and in certain aspects, there were a major tweak which came in. And this was only when we actually went and understood how a rural consumer behaves. So I think uh, it is not the market is open to everyone, I would say. Uh, all the companies can go there. It is just the way they adopt. It's just the way they strategize and implement because execution is the key there. And uh, if you understand yeah, the, the entire roadmap and you stick mm -hmm. to your guns and there might be a, a, a higher cost to serve even rural markets, but what distribution do you take? What is the platform you want to take? And, and all those things really matter. And hmm. over a period of time, uh, companies which have really understood this uh, puzzle, so-called hmm. puzzle, what I call it, uh, they they have a clear-cut growth path with the same product lines, with the same fixed cost. They can actually have growth coming in for the business. Super. So now, uh, Dinesh, if we deep drive into the rural brand wagon, what, according to you? will uh, uh, emerge in terms of what is the key difference you see the strengths are probably the weakness in just four areas that's their spending capacity their mindset their consumer behavior and health pattern so these four areas just could you just put some uh, highlights on these four areas please so yeah uh, see the current situation uh, and then, which is going on uh, just keep that in mind that post covid because what has happened has happened now. The important is post COVID, how is the situation going to emerge after these, and especially in these four areas? Right. So it's it's very pertinent question. And I think uh, everybody has been battling uh, okay. <coughs> uh, to search for an answer or an accurate and uh, sustaining uh, solution to this. But uh, post COVID, there are a few things which are emerging and which are very uh, stark. Uh, one, and there are certain facts which we shouldn't forget. One is uh, post-COVID, the the most, uh, the one thing which has been impacted and we must look at is the, is the agri-supply chain in rural, uh, which has been impacted. So, so, and we'll talk about how agri-supply chain has impacted these four areas. So one, um, so today around, 59% of the population, which is approximately 700 million people, belong to that so-called rural space. Hmm. Now, what is happening that uh, this, because of this, even before COVID happened, I think there was uh, some issue in the rural disposable income, which we could see in the last one, six, eight months or one year, which was, could be a result of lower demand or uh, certain other factors, microeconomic factors, which which were leading to this, but COVID situation has made it slightly worse, I would say, and it'll take time uh, for us to come out of that, and especially in the rural areas. Uh, but uh, um, one very clearly we're seeing that that because of this uh, disrupted agri supply chain, we even that there would be delay in the sowing season because. You know, the, the tractor, the seeds, the entire value chain, availability of them is, is becoming a constraint. And if you see now, uh, everything is dependent on, uh, in although in the MHA, let's say, the central government has given some dictate that this is how it should be post-lockdown or relaxation and lockdown. But uh, central, government, central government is one, but state governments and then the local bodies are taking their own own calls and that is impacting the whole thing and people are getting impacted the the things are not reaching them let's say the produce now we are talking about uh, the crop is done 
it's uh, the yield has come yeah. the produce is to reach mandis and then there's an msp and and obviously there's a huge and there's a huge crop i think it's one of the best crop seasons which we had but now the constraints are different in the post covid so how whether enough tractors enough trucks available to make them to reach mandis mandis are they operating are they operating in the fuel swing so looking at all this uh, according to me there would be a uh, a slight uh, uh, in the mindset there would not be a full uh, swing mindset in the sense that people would be will be happy and they'll be going back to the normal the normal will come will take some time to come and uh, the consumer behavior therefore would be slightly disrupted in the sense people because there are and when we talk about rural we only we don't even talk about agriculture we talk about even migrant workers into services uh, who are working into smes so this post covid has also impacted lot of job cuts and job cuts their families are dependent on it and and so on and so forth although uh, uh, they have uh, government has taken certain uh, you know initiatives like giving them 2000 rupees in the pm kisan yojana which happened in the april month or even uh, emi have been relaxed so those those certain things have been done or the daily wages of manrega workers has been revised so but uh, is that enough that's what we need to answer and because we are dealing with huge chunk of people who who don't who do not know that what whether they'll be able to earn their bread and butter the next day and and that situation if the lockdown continues and we are there are different situations and everybody take can take their own call that when this because according to me there is no line of sight right now that when it's going to end is it uh, on 17th we are to, we are sitting today on 11th 17th is it going to end yeah there might be certain relaxations but uh, uh, is it going to end no because the virus uh, intensity is going to increase according to me as the lockdown will open people will be more out and things like that so the th- uh, th- 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 yes sir. yeah so no, even in, uh, and right now even in rural india let's say the migrant workers which we have seen uh, going from urban areas to rural areas there also there has been spurt in cases so once uh, and the same workers when they come back to work or even few guys who stay back i think the mindset uh, is going to take time to come back to normal uh, the the behavior the consumer behavior which the point which you mentioned uh, would also uh, slightly be changing because although uh, in terms of affordability we have seen that uh, rural markets always behave differently from the urban markets slightly uh, so that will get impacted uh, and we are talking about accessibility also uh to some extent getting impacted because the regular uh, reach or transportation and other things is still not uh, will be up to mark um, so so yeah these factors according to me uh, will will get hugely impacted the going forward up to 6 months to 12 months is not so rosy according to me and there will be a huge, huge impact yeah that looks same in the urban area also when I mean, probably for urban also it does not look for next one year maybe or maybe more is what is going to be impacted um so this is just now you spoke about the technology and all so what is the impact of digitization in rural india yeah very interesting point and and uh, that was one of the key findings and uh, because we always used to believe that uh, digitization in rural uh and especially i would talk about let's say uh distribution or when we when we talk about the distribution free footprint into into rural was uh was very different from what i thought uh when we went to villages the ex- the access to through although through some means let's say if there's a e-commerce cluster operating there or there is some cooperative which is operating there or uh, there are these uh, distribution boys which are coming for order and delivery through a distributor they had pds and they were taking orders from the retailers or those small time uh, shops and sending 
orders back click back to the distributor so uh, it was it was really a uh, uh, eye opener according to, according to me when i went there and few not few sparks of brilliance but lot of sparks of brilliance i could see uh, uh, where where these e-commerce or internet has entered the way it has entered rural market and one more very clear differentiating factor there is that the companies which are doing this are the companies which are successful in rural and that is what really is is making a difference because you ask why other companies are not doing it and that these are the things which other companies don't do it because this comes out of experience they have there's a learning curve which has gone through which these guys have gone through and they tweak their business model to suit the business consumer the rural consumer and also their taste and all those four variables of a is what we call affordability accessibility and all that and they have devised, devised such a strategy that they hit the the right button and digitization hence uh, with all the uh, pms the new governments agenda is to drive digitization and a uh, lot of focus and money and resources have been put in into uh, taking that to rural and i think uh, the results have started showing up so it will be two fold according to me digitization journey one which is government led the other which is private uh, led so right. private companies which we want to uh, have a footprint into rural will have their very clear the device digitization journey and while government will keep on doing uh, for various uh, uh, social uh, upliftment whether it is for uh, teaching whether it's for hospitals uh, and uh, various other programs or even reducing you know the carving out a new pds system you know public delivery system mm -hmm. where uh, we are seeing this digitization playing a major role so uh, you, you are part of the third largest company and uh, which is into tire manufacturing now uh, dinesh for a company like yours retail is very very important right so what is the retail scenario in the rural india i mean in the sense uh, let's look at uh, from the communication aspect as well as and developing the dealer distributors and all those networks so how how do you perceive that yeah so um, again a very relevant point in the rural strategy uh, which is how to uh, look at the rural footprint uh, distribution footprint so mm -hmm. there if you see mm -hmm. uh, the retail landscape of rural it is when we went there uh, we what we saw that and we had that urban mindset and even i am talking about myself as well so we had urban mindset okay there's a shop which might be an um uh, half exclusive or full exclusive or uh, you know the get up is is nice and this and that <clears throat> when we went there it was completely opposite so it was a multi product mm. multi brand uh, shop which was not even let's say uh, 10 by 6 and his mm. warehouse is just uh, at the back side uh, not very well organized but he knows everything and when we sat the and even the delivery systems were if it's a small cargo a uh, little then he even sells sends it on bicycle if it is slightly bigger he takes uh, a tricycle so any means of uh, transportation to make that thing uh, the delivery possible he uses it so it's a cost effective uh, measure which which is very important one the second is the relationship Uh, aspect which we saw uh, with the consumers so it he caters to a certain defined predefined area where either let's say if there are 70 villages the those villages come into uh, uh, to buy the stuff in that particular you know the bigger village i would call or some some not town but much lesser than town and uh, these guys have relationship Uh, with those customers so so it's a multi product environment it's not a evolved retail format it's uh, it works uh, largely on cash uh, and cash uh, we we didn't see much of even uh, you know digital money there 
that time probably now the things might have slightly changed so so the retail format is very different and there are variety of retail formats it is not just the traditional uh, shop uh, format which is probably the most most effective and uh, prominent one but there are cooperatives there are mandis there are artiyas what they call is there is various different formats of uh, retailing which are which are available and contrary to our belief that only this uh, uh, you know rural means village village means this shop this shop means uh, people do this that mindset so even uh, the biggest example which everybody reads is is the itc's example where they created this amma uh, this thing where they went yeah they went into household and uh, made that lady an entrepreneur so so yeah we it is the way you think uh, uh, because it's a clean slate it's a white space uh, innovators marketing innovators need to think different and make it happen and even in our rural strategy uh, what we have done we created uh, something like a, a rural distributor concept and under that rural distributor concept we we involved youth from there which have and based on certain criteria what we call is as the entrepreneurs or the mobile agents now those mobile agents mm. actually go and deliver and uh, work in those villages and and bring business to this guy so that model has now we have close to around 40 such distributors and the Uh, model is evolving and how many of these entrepreneurs would be uh, so every distributor has two to three so okay. and uh, so, the concept is uh, once they get uh, into the business uh, in thick and thin then after one or two years they become distributed and then we hire another and those mobile agents are in that's a chain which you start uh, start uh, evolving as well. but do so you think skill, just skill just and capability years. building and then model sorry so just 40 you said uh, that that's what you have pan india yeah so we we started this around one year back the model oh, okay. okay and it was piloted now we are ramping up all india so okay so the pro- progression is on right so uh, so in rural uh, there is lot of role which is being played by children's and by, uh, played by women so how do you handle that i mean do you have a different strategy working for that or uh, you just look at the because your end product consumer is probably the a tractor owner or a vehicle owner so how do you uh, take that yeah so uh, that is how do you entice uh, uh, rural consumer and not only the consumer per se individual but his family so hmm. so that's that is what you talking about so we do it uh, i would say not absolutely thoroughly but yeah in a certain way so what we do we let's say the the our consuming markets where which are the uh, markets which we identified that okay these are the villages where we uh, where our consumers are so there we have uh, consumer reaching programs where even we reach out to the um, sarpanch let's say and have programs uh, there which are uh, let's say um, just to give an example we have nine different plants in the country and uh, around that plants there are villages and those villages also we do certain programs which are the csr programs also and and uh, where children and even uh, women are involved and we create that uh, business uh, model so that through csr route also they are impacted and and uh, as well as the business model uh, gets implemented so both ways and this is the way so yeah uh, as far as uh, a clear cut strategy to entice women and children uh, i would say that is still yet to come in our company especially Okay. So Dinesh, if I ask you, if you can just tell me three key uh, challenges uh, marketers see is uh, reaching the last mile. So if you have to just give, just tell me three, three, just three pointers. What would be those key pointers? 
Uh, so the I would say um, you know defining a strategy uh, in a room or through whatever you have learned is uh, one thing which very clear mistake which marketers make that uh, which so called in management terms we call is the armchair management. Uh, mm. So reach out to the markets, uh, mm. talk to the consumer, feel that consumer and mm. understand that consumer and then learn and take those insights because uh, it's not it's not that simple uh, and on one way it is absolute basic i'm talking about i'm not talking anything because your strategy is always simple and stupid it is never complex so uh, so the marketers should get out of their uh, offices and reach out to those markets where they want to implement something and then see it through their own eyes that because once let's say you have experience of 20 years so when you send somebody who's just passed out of college or have two three or four years of experience the way he would look at uh, things and the way you will look at things might be very different because certain situation might not tell you straight away that this is what the uh, ask is but then you will decode that and then formulate a strategy and i think that is absolutely important that even the senior guys uh, should visit uh, those areas understand talk I, I mean we and it is so it's such a fun when when we traveled we actually sat on the chapai we had lassi with them we had food inside their places we could see that how they're talking what is their community how they communicate and all that those things little things are important which help you to understand and then make make a, a differentiated start and i think that is key critical because and then comes the execution part but once you have the the meat or the recipe then comes that how do you actually execute it and then uh, so the execution is then becomes the key so if uh, making that understanding that thing on a scale of 10 i would say is uh, 5 then execution is the remaining 5 it's it never happens without execution and proper execution would again require the right resource structure uh, and all that which is again key critical and i think that's also a mindset management mindset in indian companies is that people who are working in urban the same people should should handle even rural but it doesn't happen let me tell you even even in our distribution what we saw when we came out with the rural distribution strategy uh, our people internal employees which were handling uh, urban areas were given rural uh, to handle rural distributors they mm. have now uh, in rural the ticket size is very small the volume of business might not be that big and the uh, mm. cost to serve might be high so and mm. it might be time taking so so mm. these variables are not so called urban variables and these mm. our guys were used to uh having these things like the ticket size is big and when we when we gave them their allocation of time towards those rural distributors which was a key critical in terms of execution didn't wasn't there and we then we changed when we studied why it is not taking off then we changed the entire uh, uh the org structure and the team and we hired people from fmcg who which were actually were from distribution mindset and that is what worked so if i understand so three things primarily what i can make from you is first is having a clear management uh, mindset the management needs to have a Absolutely. clear defined direction number two is developing a right strategy which is ex executionable which is whether you can reach to the last mile and third is learn to uh, develop relationships so if i sum yeah. up this you think these are the three strategies which is going absolutely. to go through absolutely yeah absolutely very, so, Dinesh, very I, rightly, yeah, if you have uh, just running out of time, I would just like to hear some key or some interesting uh, uh, story or uh, some interesting case study that will give a lot of insights to the marketers that how they can uh, go to the uh, rural markets or build product as well as uh, uh, penetrate the rural markets. Okay, so uh, this uh, now this is again i am not giving a story which has been read but something which i experienced 
and yes. uh, <clears throat> this uh, was when we went out when we went into the rural markets and we were studying uh, to implement a complete rural strategy and uh, by the time we had studied uh, hero model we had studied maruti model and uh, uh, we had studied certain other automotive uh, products and mm. uh, even fmcg we were in touch with itc how how do they do it so uh, one thing which uh, which struck us and we we were going through a mindset of uh, even our existing dealers let's say the the complete 5000 uh, dealerships which we have and out of them few are big so earlier we had thought that okay we will make them distributors and uh, you know he'll he has the might he has money and he has where within he has resources and he can very well do it and he also they have been approaching us ki aap rural khol rahe ho to aap hamara zarur dhyan rakhna hamare multi point access ho jayenge hamara business badh jayega and all that so we were also thinking because we have been dealing with them and they have a loyalty factor and things like that but when we went there uh to our surprise what we saw that this distributor who's dealing into uh, either a product line or more product lines has very little buy in into the products but he is more focused hmm. on the process on the process of distribution on process. yeah on the process okay. process of process. distribution okay. inventory management collection cycle uh and all that so and here the dealer is more worried on the product on the margins on on this so margin is important but you know it's a complete uh different ball game altogether and there uh, it was the complete different mindset which we saw of uh distributors versus what we were thinking as so called future distributors and uh, that opened our eyes that uh, we do not need to or it will be a it will be a uh, we'll be signing a you know right in the beginning this strategy is going to be flawed if we go this way so we have to onboard distributors which are uh, distribution centric which are which have that mindset which have that infrastructure which do not think or live or breathe our product lines like a tire dealer only breathes tires he you know whatever we call it in the management terms but for him product is just one thing but the process is of utmost important if there is a beat cycle which will go at 10 o'clock and collect orders and collect and uh, does the collection and there are x number of uh, people who will make 32 calls and will collect orders so that is so important and that is the beauty which which we saw that uh, which clearly demarcates uh, the failure and success uh, and i think uh, the management also got um, a complete peep into what a rural thing is and how and they they might be even uh, you know initial investment would be high so if somebody some company wants to go and into rural with a mindset that okay rural means here a uh, small ticket size and this but no the the initial investment the cost uh, which you are investing will be high and and the curve gradually grows so it's not that we you forward into rural and you made x this thing and immediately your growth rates are going to be in double digits so please uh, that's not going to happen uh, it it's a slow burn but it is definitely a solid growth path uh with the limited or the fixed resources which you have so you don't have to increase your uh, product lines out of bound and invest into those those kind of things with the existing product lines with the existing resources you can but uh through a, through a different mindset and different route so most important thing is what you're trying to tell me is the patience uh, going to the rural market is very very important absolutely that's a key you critical ingredient and for the entire rural recipe so <laughs> patience rakhna padega aap socho it is not going to be something like ki aap aaj jaoge aur and tomorrow you're on with the market no it's not going to happen because the companies like hero honda maruti or uh, hul these kind of companies have spent years and years uh, 
the getting to those markets so Absolutely. yes it is it is going to give you rich dividends but it, for most important is that you need to have a lot of patience entering into the rural market thank you and so much and investment into resources <laughs> into uh, mindset into training into distribution lot and the cost to serve to rural is high yeah. yes 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 so you so the company has to plan their uh, uh, the, 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 what is the the profits they are going to be working on but then there is a market which is there and which is very very large thank you dinesh for such an insightful discussion and friends next we are going to be back with discussion on rural healthcare and since we feel that that's one of the key drivers in the rural areas so health is going to be very very important part for a discussion and friends in case in case you like this video please don't forget to share with your friends and we would like that all of you take action and go to the rural markets because there's a huge opportunity which is lying in that market so friends stay safe and stay home thank you bye bye